What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the shop. Last time we were up here, we made the brilliant decision to finally start ripping into our Beater Blue Conquest. And for those of you who didn't watch the video where we went around and explained everything that was going on, this man managed to blow it up. Which means now we have to go back, pull everything out of the car, clean everything, and put it all back together. In the last video, we got everything clean. We did piping, intercoolers, as many components on the engine that we could clean, we got clean. Now that all that stuff done, we're on to the phase where we're ready to actually start putting things together. We got the drivetrain in, the motor, the trans, the drive shaft is all hooked up, bolted in the car, ready to go. So today, our goal is everything around the engine. Sensors, wiring, piping, throttle body, intake, exhaust, etc. And one of the things that we actually found when we were doing our disassembly was we had a little bit of leakage through one of the seals on our throttle body, so time for a rebuild. So that is one of the things that we need to get done today. We're gonna do a full rebuild on the Chrysler Conquest slash Sterion throttle body. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and attack wiring, piping, and all the other stuff that I just said, so. And you've probably also noticed by watching and or hearing that things look a little bit nicer than they did before. And we actually went out and got ourselves a new camera set up, so hopefully things look a little better this video, because. GoPro is getting rough. But yeah. before any of that, we gotta get everything moved. I gotta get a few things cleaned up and then we gotta get everything pulled out. We'll show you guys all the components that we're working with for the throttle body and where we got when we ended last video. And speaking of better quality, take a look at what we got done last time when we were up here. So like I said, we got our engine in, but more than that, it's clean. There's no oil everywhere. It looks good in here. We got a painted valve cover on this thing. It has been driving me up a wall since he got this thing, how much oil has just been everywhere. Now that it's clean, it looks a million times better and Kyle is happy, but I digress. It's time to get back to the point of the video. We need to rebuild, obviously, our throttle body. So I wanna quickly show you guys what we got for that and what that entails. Here guys, right now what I have here is a completely blown apart throttle body and all of the assembly to go ahead and put it back together. The reason why is when I went to go ahead and remove the idle speed control motor, I was tapping on the screws and I was watching debris fall down into the intake horn. Hit it on top of the throttle body and I'm like, all right, screw it, this whole thing's gotta come out. As I was breaking it down, I started to notice certain things such as bad shaft seals, right? You got all that um, dry, rotted, busted, busted all hell seal. Thanks to the guys over at MKS Motorsport and uh, Dad's Engine Parts, I now have everything I need to go ahead and slap this thing together and get my Peter Blue back on the road. Well, it's snowing in Minnesota and salt, Ben Road salt. Now, since we're at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just slap this together and like typical YouTube magic, I'll be back on the Peter Blue. So, stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna get this thing thrown back together real quick. Unfortunately, the oil cooler lines are still not here. So the car will not run by the end of this video, but our goal is to get it as close to that point as possible so that when those lines do show up, we can go ahead and throw them in, get it done, bleed the cooling system, throw some oil in it, and should be able to hit the road next spring. But at least we're checking one more thing off the list before winter hits. That ugly mug. The slow zoom. That face for radio. <laughs> Boy, not even radio. <laughs> That's so bogus. A face not even a mother could love. Dude, will you relax? <laughs> He's not wrong. Dude, will you hurry up? <sighs> no. Come on. Let me I like during the this video. I want to go home. That was. He wants was... to go home. Yeah, dude. Then go yeah. home. Just got off work not too long ago. Went to oh. You know what I did today? Watching this dude rebuild a throttle body because my lift is in use. There's a shitty blue conquest on it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Could be better. You could be doing ball joints on a clapped out F250 all day. Yeah, no, that would definitely be worse. Oh, it, it absolutely freaking sucked. Yeah. I no! would not. Would... Jesus, relax. Dude, my like... lord and savior. 
Can we will eventually do a like actual in-depth rebuild on this throttle body, but for now we don't have the time to do that. I want to get this conquest done. So Jay, can you stop being emo for five minutes and not hurt yourself? Relax. Yeah. My seal fell out. have it a fully rebuilt conquest stereon throttle body there were a few parts that we reused off our old build you know obviously after we got everything clean be the injectors our regulator our fuel pressure gauge one thing to notice on our new throttle body or excuse our new intake horn there's not a split down the middle the factory one if you will has a little split down the middle and a ton of extra casting that just realistically doesn't need to be there so on our new one we got rid of it all all the extra casting little split gone a um, few key things to note when you're doing this. Obviously, like you got a lot of seals, like two, two shaft seals. You got a seal between here, seals in your injectors, O-rings in here. Make everything, make sure everything's seated. Uh, a little bit of O-ring lube goes a long way when doing something like this. So have that handy for sure. And a little bit of Teflon tape if you decide to go ahead and give yourself a fuel pressure gauge, which you can do however you do need an adapter fitting. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, that's gonna be it for the throttle body. Pretty simple. I do wanna do kind of a more in-depth how to build one of these one day. Today's just not that day. Apart from this, the rest of it should be a cakewalk. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this, so she's ready to be thrown back on the car. But I, th I think with that, that's gonna be it for the day. It's getting kinda late, I wanna go home. We have all weekend to get this thing done, so I'm gonna go get some sleep, and we'll be back up here in the morning to put the rest of this car together. And we're back. We decided to skip a little bit this morning and get the throttle body actually installed on the car because it's four bolts, so you get the idea. If you don't know how to do that, I'm sorry. But we got the we got the throttle body installed. We ran a fuel line to it. Gauge is looking nice. Everything's looking nice. It's looking clean. We're good there. So to move on from this point, we have a few things still left to do. But Unfortunately, the oil cooler line that we've been talking about for three videos has still not shown up and we can't find one at like a nap or like a hydraulic hose to use because there's no local shops that do that. So we're gonna try to get as much of the rest of this done as possible without giving us too much of a hard time putting this oil cooler in. If you take a look up front here, you'll notice that it doesn't afford you a ton of space to work when you're like actually installing an oil cooler here. Cause you can imagine you got an intercooler that sits here, a radiator, you know, for those of you running AC, there's a whole nother condenser in here. You got a ton of stuff. So what we're going to try to do is if that means taking the front clip off, taking this front valence off, whatever we got to do to give ourselves a little bit more space, we're going to do it to try in efforts to be able to put the rest of this engine bay together today, which is going to consist of this upper charge pipe, you know, charge pipe out of the turbo, uh, ignition system, the rest of the harness, we got a throttle position sensor to throw in here as well. So like a bunch of stuff. 
Uh, just do a big part drop on the car, try to get as much of this put together, maybe a little bit of interior, and then we'll call it there. And the next time we can go ahead and hopefully whenever these damn lines show up, install an oil cooler and start this car up. But until then, we've got a ton of stuff to get thrown on this car. So I think we're just gonna set up, start throwing parts at it where we can, and then we'll kind of touch base probably once we get the harness in. I think that's gonna be the most boring part of this, so. Reason being mainly just because it is an old harness, like, you know, it gets it gets crusty. They, they don't move around as well as they used to, and they crack, so you gotta be kind of gentle with them. And for anyone who's ever put a harness in a car, it's a giant spaghetti mess. You kind of just have to lay it down where the, it feels the most comfortable, and you're not, like, yanking on wires, so. But that's the goal, to clean stuff up as much as possible. So we're gonna get to work on pulling some of these wires out of the harness, and uh, yeah, like I said, touch base when we're done with that. Okay. So, we're taking the front valence off. Uh, as we were doing the harness, found ourselves leaning in the car a lot. Not a ton of support under this, so better to take it off before it straightens out. <laughs> Stops coming to a point. Bent, totaled, broken. Can't f that piece up. Oh, that's going the wrong way. <laughs> Remember, lefty loosey, lighty, righty tighty. Bam, now you don't have to worry about it bending. I kind of want to cut a slot right here. Yeah, that'd be sick. A duct for the oil cooler. Yeah. That'd be tight. You know. I can't breathe in the shop because there's just Mike in the air. Mike has a tendency to blow his O-ring to the yeah. point of... Oh, and you don't either? I do not. Yes, you Do you I Oh my god, it smells like poop in here. <laughs> now, this is definitely not the cleanest job in the world, but like this is the reason why you want to go through your harnesses before throwing stuff back together. So, I mean, sometimes you find stuff like this where you have little pinches where it's good to, you know, replace the wires. Um, obviously, clean stuff up, like he was saying. Bits of the harness that aren't being used anymore because they're for things we don't have. Um, it's good to manage those wires. So, um, definitely, if you're going to pay attention to detail on one step, this is it. So it's taking us a little longer than, than expected to like get all of it done. But it, again, if you're gonna spend the time somewhere, spend it here. You don't want your sh burning down. Also, don't forget which wires go where. Yeah, well, a lot of this was uh, yeah, hacked the, before I even got it. The, so the, the harness doesn't make it easy, easy. It's like, oh, does the yellow wire with the green stripe go here, or does the other yellow wire with the green stripe go there? <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> Dude, the shop smells so bad. Hold the camera straight. Nice hands, feet. Nice hands, feet. <laughs> Alright, just a few more fixes and a little bit more tape and we should uh, we should be good to throw this in. Yeah, something like that. Hey man, Beater Blue doesn't need the best, she just needs to work. You're right. <laughs> Just like that, that's pretty much most of the harness down. Now, unfortunately, we did run out of electrical tape and uh, ran into a little issue with our throttle adjustment over here. You can see this little tab doesn't quite reach our adjustment screw, which means we need to take this back off. Put the right, put the right throttle linkage on there. So that means we're kind of halting progress for today. It is way too late for us to want to go backwards in progress, so. I think I'm gonna call it. I wanted to get a little bit more done today, but the nice part is pretty much everything from here is very straightforward and on the top. All the small wiring crap that we had to do underneath, sensors, everything's tight. So it's literally just top end work and piping some vacuum lines and we should be good to go. The only thing, the only question mark that's kind of up in the air right now is our actual oil cooler bracket. 
Uh, we have to design that from scratch because we're actually going with an aftermarket cooler, aftermarket lines and stuff like that. So obviously it's not going to mount like the factory one would, but it should be pretty easy all said and done. It's cold, it's late, I'm tired, we're tired. We want to go home. So that's going to be it for the day. If you guys liked what you saw, you want to see more of this project or anything else that we got going on, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Go check out our last video of the whole major shop update if you're curious. We'll see you guys next time. I'm convinced that the world would be so much better if EVs didn't exist. I can, I'm convinced the world would be so much better if you didn't exist. You're probably right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.